might be asking yourself, what? Where the? That's not. What's up, fan fans? So, um, I just got out of work, so that's why I'm in my car instead of my normal bookshelf and other situation computer. But I'm in my car. Uh, I want to make this video real quick for you guys. Talk about today's OTAs is open to the public. Just so you know, if you get queasy about uh, defensive dominant practices and offense struggling, you might might want to beg for this one. So I'll talk about the OTAs. I'll talk about practice. I'll talk about some of the highlights and lowlights uh, from practice today. Um, and then there was only two press conferences, uh, Gotch and um, Kiko Alonso, and they were super short. So th this video might be not the this video might not be that 20 minute I normally do with uh, media OTAs. But in like usual, let's get done. Brew and Lippet did not practice today. Uh, Lippet didn't practice because of. Um, his Achilles or anything. They're just both banged up. They don't want to essentially overwork them because it's OTAs. Charles Harris also was on the sideline just running and doing um, stuff with the trainers. That's because of his sh he has a sore shoulder and again they don't want to have to over advert them and um, it's OTAs. Yeah. Tannehill was throwing a, a bunch of touchdowns today. Um, one to Devontae Parker. Uh, he threw one to De Amendola. Um, but it would have been a sack because, you know, the, you're not allowed to hit the quarterback. So essentially, he would have got sacked, but he threw it anyway. And it was a nice touchdown pass to Danny Mandola. Uh, William Hayes blew up a play um, and got a sack. Um, one of the things that I noticed that the first thing that they talked about that they saw was Gazeki, our boy Gazeki, caught a touchdown pass in the end zone. And they were saying that that ball had to have been 10 feet in the air, and this dude jumped up and grabbed it. I'm so happy! Then they started doing red zone work, um, and there, there was uh, you know a touchdown pass from Tannehill to Kenyon Drake. Frank Gore got a touchdown pass from Fails. Um, there was a bunch of breakups. Uh, then there was an offensive pass interference that was. Uh, that essentially negated a nice touchdown pass to Lewis. Um, Bollage had a touchdown catch. Petty trips on an offensive lineman in the red zone work and falls. Um, he is being shown why he is the Dolphins' fourth quarterback and most likely not making the team. It looks like it's going to be Tannehill, Brock Osweiler, and David Fales. And it's David Fales and Brock Osweiler are competing for backup, and it looks like a very tight competition. Sanders did well today. I think he hit three or four of his field goals. He made a 41-yarder, 49-yarder, and a 54-yarder, which had plenty of room. Uh, he missed, but not bad three for four today. Um, I prefer a four, to four for four day. I also prefer a perfect day out of this dude, but he's showing that his inaccuracies are slowly going away. Um, let's hope and pray. William Hayes has a false start, but they said that they noticed that the false starts are few and far between, um, especially without Sue there, which he was the biggest dude for giving us false starts, but it worked out because he would give us a false start, but then there was the other times he did it and he would always catch that snap cap. But anyway, no matter, he's not on the team anymore. Tannehill with a nice fourth down pass to Devontae Parker for a first down. It was a good play. Alonzo made a big play and he stopped the run for like three yards in the backfield on a blitz. Um, I don't know if he was playing middle or outside linebacker. Um, I'm pretty sure he was playing outside linebacker, but it's good to see Alonzo being that aggressive player he um, used to be. It was a good scramble from Brock Osweiler when no one was open. Maybe Gase is trying to get him out of his head and do the right things. The biggest thing that was talked about today was Fails. And Fails had a had a good day. He had an impressive 30-yard sideline pass. Um, back shoulder throw to Albert Wilson. Fails is the first person. Uh, they, they were doing a garbage can um, exercise, essentially where you're trying to throw the ball in the garbage can. Fails was the first one to make it in. But Tannehill also, twice in a row, hit the garbage can, but it didn't go in. And finally... Tannehill got it in. Juwan James was having a bad day. Uh, Wake would have got a sack on him. Um, I think William, William Hayes 
almost got a sack and it was mostly from blocking um, from Juwan James. Rashad Jones almost had a pick off a deflection, but he dropped it from a pass that Dan Hill tried to squeeze in on tight coverage. Um, Alonzo also dropped a would-be uh, Tannehill interception. That was just like a really nice read from Kiko Alonzo. Um, which today was a very good day for the defense, especially what I'm hearing from Alonzo. It seems like he's trying to get back in his normal form. One of the bright spots was Wilson turned a normal uh, routine pass into a 25 yard touchdown. And that's why we signed Albert Wilson is because he's able to break plays off like that and make something out of nothing like Jarvis used to do. Elston, but he picked off a, a tip pass, plucked it. David Fails pass was tipped plucked it um, interception in the end zone um, also Lewis uh, pass goes right through his hands and Hill not a great day today uh, two near picks and he uh, very off rhythm but again it's the what this is the fifth days of OTAs so you want to get all these jitters and all these shitty days off your back at this point and try to mend with your um, offensive weapons wide receivers were taking way too long to get open for Tannehill so that's why he took by a lot of sacks, would be sacks, because again, they can't hit him. Um, and there was a lot of dump off passes today. Um, I don't know if that was designed, like if they're just practicing doing the dump off passes or because no one was getting open and that's just what a quarterback does, you know? If the receiver's taking too long to get open, here comes the pressure, you just dump it off. Um, but I, I feel comfortable dumping it off, especially Kenyon Drake, because he can get open and he also can make plays after he catches the ball. Undrafted Rook picks off Bryce Petty on a seven on seven and like seemed to have end, ended practice. Um, but uh, like I said before, um, defense had a day today. Um, lots of pressure, lots of would be interceptions, which I understand that two of them were deflections, but you got to catch those interceptions, especially when the game's on the line and it, and it will end the game. They need to practice catching the interceptions, but also on the flip side, the offense needs to catch the ball. Uh, I've noticed that a lot of times when Tannehill will have a bad game or if he'll have interceptions, like a good amount of interceptions, 50% of the time, it's the receivers are tipping the ball in the air and the, other pe the uh, corners are catching it, or they're just not catching the ball. These receivers need to catch the ball. I'm gonna read you a, a tweet from Barry Jackson on what he saw that the Dolphins envisioned. He said, clear Dolphins vision conveyed again last two days uh, is play fast on offense, no huddle, uh, rotate a lot of the defensive lines on defense and swarm the ball. I'm not a big fan of hurry up. I've said this before because the hurry up, if you're hurrying up and you suck, it's three and out real quick and then your defense is back there. But if it works, it works. And then having the defense rotate a lot of defensive lines, keeping them fresh, making them being able to rush the passer and being swarming the ball, hey, that's a good that's good to me very big defensive day um david fails was a bright spot um albert wilson was a bright spot he made some nice catches broke off that 25 yard touchdown and the defense just lit it up so very big defensive day which it's gonna happen it's not it, it'd be nice a back and forth you know but it, it's gonna happen now to the press conferences again these are very short it was just david uh devon gotch and kiko alonzo and essentially devon gotch he said he doesn't feel like a vet it's his second year but he says he's got a lot to lot to um earn and a lot to show which is good he's not resting on his morals um he said that this ota is, is more intense than the other one he's been part of last year which is good hopefully there's a fire under his ass um one of the tweets uh that I saw about the defensive line coach. He said he's getting after us each and every day, whether it's in the film room or on the field, he's intense. Good, we need this defensive line to be, play intense. We have talent there. If they could just play intense, if they could just play hard, this sky's the limit with this defense. He said that seeing the Jaguars defensive line and how crazy and how aggressive they are, that's what he envisions the Dolphins defensive line to be like. And I'd be very happy with that because the Dolphins defensive line was eh last year. And that Jags defensive line was just, it won them games because that Jags offense sucks. Blake Bortles is not a good quarterback. So that defense won him a ton of games. And then Kiko Alonso, uh, apparently he only said two things. He was only up on the podium for like two minutes. But uh, he said that the guys that were added and the rookies are going to make him and Raquan McMillan look real good, uh, which 
I hope so because that linebacker core is the one that scares me the most. I'd like them to sign Michael Kendricks. Again, we'll find out Friday. Um, and then he said the linebacker position nowadays is about can you run? Are you running and can you run? Because the NFL is getting super fast. This was short and sweet to the point. Like I said, very defensive day. Um, offense was eh, crappy at points, uh, really good at points. Uh, but the defense was swarming today, which is good to see, like I, like I said before. If it's a back and forth game where one day it's a defense, one day it's the offense back and forth, that's good. Um, you can't really judge uh, players and you can't really judge their performance when they're playing each other every friggin' day. Well, not every day, it's three days a week for OTAs. But they're playing each other a lot, so you pick up on tendencies. You pick on blocking patterns, you pick, on, you pick up on... Uh, their spin moves you pick up on their rip moves on their routes and everything and their tendencies So you really get to get a feel for how a team is going to be and how a team is Playing when they start playing other teams So I think the Dolphins are trying to have a joint practice last year We did with the Eagles and I think the year before we did with the Panthers um, I know they're trying to do another joint practice That's when you'll see what this team is made of the first time, and then preseason, and then, you know, I give it to week six, and then we'll know what team we are, because we went one and four, and then week six, we beat the Steelers, and then all of a sudden we started thriving, so you, that's when you start to really see what the team is made of. But other than that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this uh, short and sweet um, OTA video. Hit that like button if you liked it. I love your comments. Comment below, let me know what you think. Uh, <clears throat> if you have other news that I didn't get uh, to talk about, feel free to drop it down below. I'll comment. I'll even, maybe I'll pin it to the top. A new thing I'm gonna do, which I'm gonna do right now, is comment of the day. So I'm gonna pick one of your guys' comments. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna either answer it or respond to it, depending on if it's a question or not. Today's comment of the day comes from Spegbite. Spegbite. I think that's his name. Spegbite Gaming. And he said, dude, loving the news gets me hyped and then he asks who's your favorite current player and who do you hope gets off this year most tankersley harris scotch my favorite current player is cameron wake and probably rashad jones um i have a soft spot for Tannehill, but those are my um guys because they've been with the team the longest and i just i have Wake's jersey and I'll probably get a Rashad Jones jersey because I can see him retiring a Dolphin. Now, who do I hope gets off this year? I'm going to pick an offensive and I'm going to pick a defensive player. Offensive, Tannehill. Um, you could, I could pick, you know, any of the receivers or Kenyon Drake or, you know, Gazeki. But if Tannehill gets off, goes off this year and if Tannehill lights it up this year, that means that the, the um, offense and the team is playing great and we'll probably have a really good record. On defense, I'm gonna pick either Gotch or Phillips or one of the defensive tackles because we need someone to step up and take over for Indomitian Sioux. If they could play great, if they can get a ton of pressure, then the pass rushers on the outside can and also the linebackers. So there's your answer, Spegbite. If you want me to answer your comment, if you wanna be comment of the day, comment below. That's all you gotta do. Whether it's about the dolphins or whatever, comment below if I like it. If you think it's funny, I will answer it in the next video. Other than that, like usual, go follow me on Twitter. Uh, I tweet a ton of stuff. Dougly do wrong. Um, sweating because I'm in my car. Also, don't forget to check out my gaming channel, youtubecom bitboys We put a ton of videos out a week. We're super funny. Hey, Spegbite, your name is Spegbite Gaming. If you're not checking us out, I'm gonna be uh, disappointed in you. Check us out. I will send you a free wristband. The wristbands are coming to the guys who have commented and subscribed. I appreciate it. Other than that, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys subscribing. We're almost at 600 at this point. Um, I will do something very big when we hit a very specific number. And other than that, like usual, I'm going to start my car. I'm going to go home. I'm going to put the air conditioner on because it's hot and bins up. Since the OTAs were close to the media, this video that shows two defensive backs climbing the ladder to get that ball. Um, the guy in the front is 26, which is Maurice Smith, um, safety. And the guy in the back, who looks like he's friggin' flying, I don't know who that is. I'm trying to figure out his number.